It's so good to be live yet again. <laughs> Listen, today is one of those days. Today is one of those special days because today marks the official launch of the Digipreneur FM podcast, the website. And if you have been following the journey over the weekend, so here in Trinidad and Tobago, we were under a 48-hour lockdown. It was like, what was it, like three days? From Friday night to early Monday morning. And honestly, I had the podcast planned to do in July. That was my goal. I was going to be doing that in July. And I was like, you know what? Now might be the good time to, to make use of this lockdown and just be really productive but also have some fun with it also take you guys behind the scenes from me starting from scratch with no podcast to putting everything together in just two days and we successfully did that so before we dive into anything you guys know how this goes man you guys give me energy you guys and i give you back the energy so let me know who is inside Jump in the comments. Let me know that you are here. Let me know that you are live. Let me know that you are excited to watch tonight's live stream. And also, we got to do the road call. So if you are here in Trinidad and Tobago, let me know. If you are in Jamaica, please big up yourself and let me know that you're inside from Jamaica. If you're from Grenada, Barbados, Guyana, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Montserrat, uh, Haiti, if you're from the U.S., if you are from Canada, big up to the 416. Toronto crew is always inside here with me. If you're from the U.K. and you're tuning in live, listen, let me know in the comments, man. I'm super excited to get this thing on the road. Let's see who we have inside the chat tonight. So we have Dana. Dana says she can't get enough of this intro. Listen, Dana. I ain't gonna lie, I can't get enough of that intro myself. <laughs> it's kind of hot. It's kind of fire. I love it. I'm glad that you love it too. Anna Marie Jonas says she's inside. Oh, I'm going, Anna Marie. Carrie Ann says, big up, Karen. Listen, Jamaica Massive is always in the building, you know. <laughs> My guy, listen, when you talk podcasts, you can't talk podcasts and not mention this guy, Kevin Valley. Valley has been pushing the podcasting space in Trinidad throughout and pushing it throughout the Caribbean for some years now and still going strong. Check out Caribbean Power Lunch and also become investable because listen, those two platforms, he has some crazy content, especially on Become Investable. You know, this is a business show, so if you need to learn how to get your business, um, if you need to know how to, how to get your business up, how to build a valuation, how to build the value of your company, go and check out Come investable. Tadine says she's inside. She loves the intro so much. Let's go. Listen, I, I really and truly, I could play that intro again and bust a little dance, you know. <laughs> I, I could definitely play that intro again and bust a little dance. I love it. Listen, the YouTube crew is inside. We have Ronnie. Ronnie's over in here in Trinidad. Mickey is live from Trinidad. Stefan Duncan, my guy, over Miller's in the house. He's inside. Mickey says he missed the intro. Play it over. Sheldon Paul says good night. Sheldon Paul, good night, good night, good night. Man, listen, I would definitely play it. If, if I get enough people asking to play that intro again, uh, well, look at that. We have people. If you listen, if you guys want to hear the intro again, let me know in the comments if you want to hear the intro over again. The, the, I, will, I will be breaking down, you know, how the intro even came about. That's going to be... Later on in the show, when we go through, you know, how to put together this podcast. But if you guys missed the intro and you want to hear the intro again, let me know and I will play the intro. If five more people say play it again, we're at two. If five more people say play it again, we will play the intro again. I'm hearing we're busting a dance. I'm hearing run tape, play it again. We're curious, play it. Yes. Flame Tim, play it again. All right, you know what? Cue up the music, let's go.
Listen to me. <laughs> Listen, if you guys love that intro, please, you got to hit me the yoga flame. Drop some flames in the comments. Let me know if you guys are enjoying that intro. Please drop some flames. Let me know if you guys are enjoying that intro because you know what? Again, like I said, we're going to be diving into how everything came about all right so if you are tuning in this is good we we got to we got to run back the intro right we got to run back the intro so whoever missed it got to hear it all right and it got a chance for more people to come in that's beautiful i love it drop some flames if you love that intro <laughs> so what are we doing here tonight tonight is a special night tonight is the official launch of the Digipreneur FM podcast. Listen, can we get a round of applause for the Digipreneur FM podcast? So over the last two days, over the weekend, I decided that I was going to push up um, the, the launch of the podcast from July, and I wanted to have some fun with it. So I decided to story the entire process from beginning to the end, um, putting together the podcast, all right? So what I want to go through tonight is I want to go through, you know, how everything came about. I want to show you guys a recap of kind of go through, you know, what we did, talk about some of the digital assets that you need to really support your podcast. Because listen... Podcasting is the easiest is the easiest medium of content to create. It is really the easiest. The only thing you need for a podcast is you need your phone and you need a headset. Once you have a phone and a headset, you could use the recorder on your phone and record the audio and go to any um, podcast host and you could use a free one like Anchor. And upload your podcast, and that's it. And the podcast is there, right? So it's easy to start a podcast. The difficult thing about, about introducing a new medium to your brand is building out the assets to support the brand, right? You don't just want to just launch the podcast and you have nothing else to support it. You want to have those digital assets in place. That way, when your podcast launches, it's coming with some gusto. It's coming with some pizzazz. It's coming with some schwag. <laughs> and it's coming with the assets to help you build the brand to bolster your podcast. So it gets more reach. There's more fanfare. There is more people taking, taking, um, taking notice of the podcast, right? So, without further ado, let's get right into the first order of business. Let us officially turn on the Digipreneur FM podcast. And we are going to do that live. Are you guys ready? If you guys are ready for me to turn on the Digipreneur.fm website, Please let me know in the comments. Let me know that we ready. Let me know that we ready or drop some flames in the comments and we're going to get started and we're going to turn this thing on. Drop some flames in the comments. Let me know if you are ready and we are going to turn this website on. I'm going to give you guys two seconds to drop some flames while I sit my refreshing beverage. I hope you guys have one too. All right, perfect. So, all right, everybody's coming in. We ready. We got the flames. All right, I'm refreshed. We got the flames coming in. Let's turn this bad boy on. So the website is digipreneur.fm. Not digipreneur.com, not .co, not .me. It is digipreneur.fm, right? And fm.fm is a branded domain name, 
All right. So I didn't want to go with, you know, the regular stuff of the dot com. Well, dot com wasn't even available. I wanted to go with something that was fresh, that was different. I wanted to go with something that fit the brand. And digipreneur.fm fit that bill. So let's go over to digipreneur.fm. All right. And before we let us turn on the website. So I built this website over on WordPress, but if you are deciding to uh, start your podcast and you want to build your website, and this is just to help you um, create content and, and let people know about the brand, you don't even need to do anything too fancy. You could jump on Wix and you could create a nice little podcast page. You could jump on any platform um, that is easy for you to use and navigate and create a nice little website to help push and support your podcast brand. So let's go over and let's turn off the maintenance mode and let us get this turned on. So we are going to take off the coming soon page, save changes, and folks, digipreneur.fm is officially live and you guys can now go and visit the site so let's take a quick little tour so visit site let's go oh we got we got animation we got a wave for we got a wave for oh shoot <laughs> digipreneur fm is here folks this is the website dedicated specifically for the podcast all of the information about the episodes are going to be loaded here. Um, features, guests that I have, all of that information is going to be loaded here. This is going to be a place where you can come and learn, um, learn about the podcast, learn about the guests. Um, I'm going to be blogging on this platform too. It's really going to be a place for using... It's going to be a place for you to learn, all right? Most importantly, it is going to be a place for you to learn. You guys are going to be able to come over here and support the podcast. So if you guys love the content, love what we are doing, and you guys want to make donations, listen, all that does is help me create more content for you guys. So we're going to just go through uh, the website, all right? quickly just go through because you guys can also pull this up um, whenever you guys get a chance but I just want to give you guys a quick run through of the of the platform so that's the home page right and everything is clickable everything is live so you guys can actually listen to the podcast on the website as well. you guys can listen to the podcast on the website all right you guys can see all of the episodes that are available on the website. Now, I had, I did an episode this morning, but I did not load it onto the onto the website as yet. But there are officially three episodes of the Digipreneur.fm podcast. All right, so all of those episodes will be loaded there. When you guys click on an episode, it's going to break down what each individual podcast is about. All right. And then you also have a timeline. And the beautiful thing about the timeline is the timeline is clickable. So let's just say if, if I'm talking about, you know, five reasons to do X, Y, and Z, um, and I have them loaded into the timeline, you guys can click on the timeline and that will skip to Products. that point in the podcast. I could be the face. So of that is all live. You guys can click on the dive in. timeline and that will skip automatically to, really to that part in moves. the podcast and for you guys. All right. They would start to come to me. So the breakdown of the podcast is going to be on the website. All right. You guys will be able to subscribe on any one of those platforms. I have to add Google Podcasts in. Google Podcasts just went live for me after lunch. So Google Podcasts is still populated. Um, and by tomorrow. So if you guys were to go onto Google right now and type in Digipreneur FM, you would be able to see the podcast coming up. But if you were to go into Google Podcasts, the actual app, it, it's not showing right now. So hopefully by tomorrow, um, it will show up. 
in the actual app itself. Like I said, I'm also going to be blogging on the platform. Um, I'm still planning out what I'm going to blog because I'm like, yo, I've been, I've been blogging for so many years and I'm trying to run away. I'm trying to minimize, you know, the blogging, but blogging just does so much from a, um, a search engine optimization perspective that I could just never get away from it. But I will be blogging. I will figure out what content to create on this platform, but I will be blogging and creating additional content through blogs. You guys can also sign up for the newsletters on every single page. All right? Let me know if you guys are liking the website so far. You know, drop some comments in there for me. I'm seeing some. I'm seeing some flames. I'm seeing, yeah, we're getting some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right? I love it. Let's just refresh that. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Chrome, bam, Digipreneur. All right, let's go again. All right, so the blog is going to be there. You guys can go to the Contact Us page um, if you need to drop me a message about the podcast. There's also going to be, I have one other page to create, which is going to be the sponsorship page. So if you guys want to sponsor an episode or do advertising, all of that information is going to be available, right? So again, just quickly running through the website just to give you guys a look. And look at that. We're based out in Trinidad and Tobago. Ross. You know, we got to give a nice little... <laughs> Tobago in the building. <laughs> you got to love it, right? You got to love it. Um... And yeah, so that is what, that is, that is the website. And again, if you guys were to, if you guys wanted to donate, I'm not telling you have to, but if you want to support the channel, what you guys can go and do is click on the, click on the donate button. And what that does is it opens up a payment form and you guys can make a donation to the platform. Now, the reason I also wanted to show you guys this is because if you are a content creator, and you want to be able to take, allow your audience to be able to donate to your platform to support your channel. You can register with any platform that allows pay links. So you could use WePay for this. You could use Social Pay. I'm currently using Social Pay um, for my donations. Uh, you could use BuzzPay and you could use Figaro. They all allow you to get pay links. And it's an open pay link. So people can type in their name, their address, their contact number, and they can specify how much money they want to donate to you. And then you could, they could use their credit card and send you a payment. That way they can support your channel. So any content creator who is in, um, who is in, who is in this, uh, who is in this live right now, if you want, you can add pay links to any platform. You can add it to your IG. You can add it to Facebook. You can add it to your website. And what that does is that open pay link will allow people to support you. They'll be able to click on the link and open up a payment form and people can use their credit card and send you a donation. And that would go into your account. That's with, with whoever you want to use, whether that is WePay, SocialPay, uh, Figaro, uh, BuzzPay. If you're across the Caribbean, you can even do this with PayPal as well, right? If you are outside the Caribbean and you are, are thinking about taking donations on your platform, you can do that with Pay, you can do that with PayPal as well. All right. So that is the Digipreneur FM website. There's going to be a lot more content coming on the platform. But again, this is, you know, this is the, the start. And I did this, I put this together over the weekend. I did this over Saturday and Sunday. I put together every single thing that you see here. All right. These images with the graphics, these images with the little wave files and the and the little the little images, the little designs, I actually went over to Fiverr to get these done. So I paid ten dollars for the person to design these images. So I paid ten dollars to design this image, and then if we scroll down some more, the designer did another one for me over here. All right. And so when you guys are building out your platforms and you guys need to use images, you guys need to be able to be resourceful and tap into the global resources because you can get a lot of things done at really good prices for high quality and that will allow you guys to bolster your brand. A lot of times, uh, you know, we in Trinidad, we get stuck with, you know, just only reaching out to local people because you want to support local people, 
But when I got a quote from a local designer to do this, it was over a thousand dollars to do this. And I went on Fiverr and I got exactly what I wanted for ten dollars. I mean, you want to support local, but local also needs to be able to understand, you know, that we're a part of the global economy. We can access freelancers all over the world. So rather than spend a thousand dollars to get, you know, two images, well it was a thousand dollars per image, you know, I got somebody on Fiverr to do it for ten dollars. So again, that's a good lesson. For anybody who's building their brand that needs to get um, things done, you guys have access to things like Fiverr, all right? So, speaking of Fiverr, right? Speaking of Fiverr, let's talk about the intro. Let us talk about the intro. And again, I will always be fully transparent with you guys and show you guys um, everything that I do, right? I have no problem doing that. You know, I create content on my own strength. I don't have nothing to hide. I can show you guys all of the behind the scenes. That way you guys can watch and level up and learn from my wins and learn from my mistakes as well. So let me dive into the music, the intro that you guys love. Let's dive into that. So I knew that I wanted to have some custom made audio for the podcast, right? I wanted to get some custom made music for the podcast. So what I did was I jumped over on Fiverr and I said, I want podcast music. Typed in podcast music and I found a bunch of people that were creating music um, for intros and outros for podcast music. Right now, again, everybody is a freelancer. Everybody's going to have a different skill set. What I recommend you. What I recommend everybody to do is when you find somebody, always check out the prices, but go and listen to the person's portfolio, right? So many times we just we just pay people. We don't even look at their portfolio. What kind of madness is that? You need to look at people's portfolio and see is that person creating something that you actually like? So I would go through everybody's portfolio, listen to the music, and then when I find something I like, I'm like, all right, this is making sense. So what did I do? I found, I went over to, I had found this guy. Let's see, let me see. Yeah, podcast intro, right? And I'm going to go back to the price just now, but I'm going to, I just want to pull up his profile, right? So I found this guy. He will create intro music uh, for your theme. He will create intro music for your theme, right? So... Um, I checked out his portfolio. I liked, I listened to all of the music. When I heard this, let me play that back. When I heard that, I was like, yo, this is a vibe. I really, I really like that song. So I skipped through. And I like this guy's music, right? So I went through his, I went through his portfolio. He has really good ratings, 4.9. And then I looked at his different pricings and whatnot. I messaged him and I was like, yo, this is what I want. Um, can you do it? He's like, yeah, he can create something that fit my parameters. So I took the $35 package that gave me 20 seconds, 10 instruments, um, high quality audio file. I could use it, use it for commercial, right? And this was what he gave me. So let me play what he gave me. So again, as you guys can see, um, there was a there was a delivery fee, or I forget what the extra fee is, but my total price was thirty eight ninety three, right? So that's what I paid to have this beat done. I sent him over my requirements, so I filled out the form. I gave him some examples of music that I like and the vibe that I was looking for. I wanted something that had trumpets. I wanted something that had like a kind of a royal and regal feel. Like whenever I think of, you know, um, you know, royalty kind of coming through or a celebration or parade, I always have this idea of, you know, people playing the, the horns, people playing the trumpets, and they kind of just kind of announce, you know, whoever is kind of coming through. And there's that celebration uh, when, when that trumpet starts to blare. It starts off that celebration. And I love like a boss from Rick Ross. I feel like it captures that vibe. 
And also Trophies by Drake also captures that vibe that I want. So those are the examples I gave them. So this was the, this was the end result of, of that. Let's play this. So I'll play it one more time, 20, 15 seconds. So when I heard that, I was like, eh, I'm not feeling it, man. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it, right? I'm not feeling it. And there was, to me, there was nothing I could tweak in that um, that made me say, you know, I could have salvaged it. So I counted it as a loss. Again, Fiverr is a, a collection of freelancers. You're not going to get what you want every single time. But I would say I have a 90% hit rate on Fiverr, where 90% of the time I've gotten what I wanted and even more. And 10%, uh, I had to count it up as a loss because it didn't come out the way that I had envisioned it, right? So I, said, I decided, okay, you know what? If I can't get custom music the way that I want, let me go and purchase music. Let me go and find a place where producers are selling their music and let me go and purchase the music. So that took me to a place called Beatstars.com, all right? And Beatstars um, is, a, is a platform where producers can come and sell their music. Excuse me. Producers can come and sell their music. And they have a variety of filters to kind of filter down the type of music that you're looking for, all right? And so when I came in here, I was just experimenting. So I just threw up J. Cole's name. I threw up J. Cole's name. And I decided I was just going to go through and listen to music. Now, I went through, like I spent maybe an hour or two just going through a lot of music, right? But I'm going to play for you guys. I'm going to play pieces of the three beats that I was like, oh, snap, this is me. I need this. This song called Dollar Sign. So as you guys would have seen, I paid $38 to build a custom music. This song, this beat by Lucas Quinn called Dollar Science. I wanted something upbeat. I found that the custom one that I got on Fiverr wasn't upbeat enough. So as you guys, if you don't know, but BPM is beat per minute. And the higher the BPM is the, is the, is the more fast paced the music is. So when I had clicked on this, this one is $30, right, to buy, to buy the rights to it. When I clicked on it, listen to, listen to this. I love it. Love, love, love. I had loved that, right? But I was like, I can't see it being my intro. I love the beat, but I can't see it being my intro. The other, <laughs> I'm about to start rapping. I, that beat makes me want to rap, say least. That beat makes me want to rap. So the other one that I that I listened to, and I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this, this, I need to buy it. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I need to buy it. And all of a sudden, it seems like I can't find it. And let me see. Let me see if I can. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh my goodness. You if somebody bought the beat, somebody may have bought the beat. If that person bought that beat before I bought it, they are wicked because I was going to buy that song. I was going to buy that instrumental. Oh my goodness, I, I can't. Folks, somebody may have bought the beat. 
this was the, this was my second place contender, and I think somebody may have just bought it because up to yesterday, I was listening to it, and now I can't find it. But you know what? That's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. So we uh, we won't complain. All right, let me play. Let me go over to. Let me go over to the guy. The guy who I ended up buying my beat from. And I think he may have taken it down. Yeah, he took it down. Did he take it down? Anyways, the point of the, the point of this is you go through this entire thing. Oh, look, it's right here. Never mind. The point is, you can go to the platform and purchase music from producers. So I purchased off season. Check, check, one, two, yo! Rose in the building! Yo, that, when I heard this, I, I got up off my feet. I got up off my seat and I was like, yo! This is me! This is me! And everything I had wanted, everything just was in this beat. So I went, I purchased it. So I would definitely recommend, you know, if you can't get the custom music, go onto platforms that are selling instrumentals and go purchase the rights um, to some music for you guys to go and use. So after I went and I purchased the beat, the next thing I needed to do was I needed to create the intro. So I went back on Fiverr. And I went, I typed in podcast intro, and I went through people's voice notes to, I went through, not voice notes, I went through people's portfolios to see who was creating an intro that I liked. So I went through a bunch of people. And then I found this guy, your imaging guy. Listen to me. When I heard his stuff, I was like, this is it. I love this guy's energy. I love his voice. I'm, I'm going to just play one for you. Hey, what's going on? You need a show intro and outro. The ones I make are the best on Fiverr. Yeah, I'm that cocky. Don't talk. Just listen. Listen. The most stimulating hour of your day. Ah. You're listening to the Power Hour. Ah. Now zip up and put your headphones on. <laughs> oh. You're listening to Real Talk with Russ Ward. Just because you're struggling doesn't mean Listen, when I went through his entire portfolio, he was witty, energy, super charismatic. I just, of, of everybody that I heard on Fiverr, I was just like, yo, this is, I just loved his energy. Now, again, the, 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 the thing that I wanted to do, right, is I wanted to have a Caribbean artist voice my podcast intro. Now, I said this on my IG stories. I am my own hype man. I need to do things for me to hype my own self up because when I get hype up for myself, it allows me to create whatever I'm creating at a very high level. And so for me, when I had envisioned my podcast, those who know, know, since last year, I've been trying to get in contact with two artists. And those two artists was Bounty Killer, I wanted Bounty Killer to voice my intro and not for nothing how I reached out to management, uh, his, his social media. Nobody responded back to no messages, no emails, no calls, nothing. I was like, yo, this is wild. Like, how do you book this guy? <laughs> how do you book Bounty Killer? If anybody knows Bounty Killer, if anybody knows Rodney Price, tell him I'm looking for him because I wanted him to voice my intro. And honestly... If I have the opportunity to do it, I'm going to do it. Now, when Bounty Killer, I couldn't, could not get a line to this guy. No management, no nothing. I, I ain't big enough. But, you know, this we're we going we to get there, right? The second person I went looking for is another guy who, whenever I hear his voice, I just want to throw things. I just want to get hype. I want to throw things. And I wanted him... Because I love his voice. 
and that was Skinny Fabulous. And I wanted Skinny Fabulous to do my intro, but again, just could not get a hold of this guy. Like again, sending emails, sending messages, no responses. And I'm just like, yo, who, how do you book these people? If nobody's answered, if they have the, the messages to their emails, and, and again, you have, we can track our emails to see who's opening it. And people are not even opening the emails. They're not even reading the messages. So it's like, how are these guys, how do you even go through and get these guys booked, right? But anyway, Skinny Fabulous was the next guy I was looking at. Couldn't get a line on him, so I said, all right, cool, no problem, whatever, right? It'll happen when it happens. I'm still open to it, but it'll happen on its own time. I'm not going to, you know, uh, throw off the intro because I can't get what I want. And I asked, I started to ask a few radio personalities. I asked about four radio personalities, like, you know, what is the going rate? Like, I asked a couple people in Jamaica, and I asked um, somebody in Barbados and somebody in Trinidad, and a couple people in Trinidad. And I was like, well, what is the going rate for, you know, um, intros, like a, like a dub play? And they were like, you know, it would have cost me about 200 US and up, right, to do to do the, the, the intro. And I was like, yo, I'm not even trying to, like, I respect your prices, I respect the craft, I'm, like, I, I ain't mad. But it's like, again, in the Caribbean, like, we don't understand that a lot of these things are commoditized. We can access tons of different platforms and get access to voice actors all over the world or imaging guys all over the world who are doing this for a living. And this is this is a side business, or maybe they're making enough and it's their full-time business. But, you know, maybe they might have retired from radio or whatever. The point is, you have access to all of these people to do these things, right? And so, when I came on Fiverr, and I heard um, your imaging guy stuff, I'm like, yo, I want this. So I took his $50 package, and I got the intro and outro and the sound effects, and I had to, I gave him my script. I wrote the script. So everything you hear in the intro, I wrote the script myself and I gave it to him and he executed and he executed flawlessly. And that only costed me 50 US. And I'm more than happy. I am more than happy. This is, is good enough for me to go through until, you know, Bounty Killan or Skinny Fabulous answer my call, all right? So again, you have access to a wealth of freelancers. If you are building your brand, you're building your platforms, tap in to those resources. So I did that. I got him. He did my um, my intro and my outro. Uh, I, I, I paid $50 to get that stuff done. All right. So that was the the uh, that was the the podcast. Right? That was the podcast music. That's how that came about. So next up was um, the cover art. So last year, I did two shoots. And in both of those shoots, I took photos specifically for me to use um, for the Digital Age show. And also, I took images that I kept aside um, for the podcast. So I did two photo shoots last year. I did one with um, Kyle Archibald. Shout outs to him. Go follow him on, on social media. If you're not, he's, one, he's a dope um, photographer. Um, he did... He did uh, my first shoot, and then I uh, booked my guy, Tariq Eastman, another amazing photographer. And we did that shoot in December, and we did uh, we did images specifically for the podcast that I kept on ice to use for the website, right? So what I ended up doing was I went through, I looked for images that I really, really liked, and then I decided to go back to Fiverr. So when I went to Fiverr, I went, and again, I'm showing you guys all of this stuff, right? I went over to Fiverr, and I'm showing you guys how much I paid to have my artwork, how my, my podcast cover art design. I paid $12. I went to a local graphic designer in Trinidad, and I told them exactly what I wanted, and they quoted me $1,500 TT dollars. $1,500 TT dollars to give me the podcast cover that I wanted. And I was like, yo, there's just no way I'm paying that. I jumped on Fiverr. I went through people's portfolio. I found this guy. Charged me $12. And this was, and I'm going to show you guys, right? We didn't get it right the first time because we had a bunch of revisions to make. But check this out. 
So the first revision, the first thing that he created was this. I was like, no, that is ass. I ain't feeling it. I'm not feeling that at all. So I'm like, nah, scrap that. I want X, Y, and Z. So then he came back with this. I'm like, yo, we're getting better. But a couple things. You misspelled Digipreneur, so we're going to fix that. And I'm like, this FM, I'm like, the FM in the E, I'm like, I can't even see that. I'm like, I don't want that. And I'm like, I don't like the script writing because you can't really see it. So scrap that. Take that out, right? But I'm like, we're getting closer. We made revisions, right? As you guys can see, I made revisions. He said, okay, I'll do the modifications. No problem. He came back with this. And I'm like, yo, we're getting closer. But I'm like, I don't like the script writing. I'm like, give me something blocky that stands out, right? I'm like, let's get that. Let's get the with, with, the, with the, the Karen Rose part, right? But I'm like, yo, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're on version number three, right? And now when we come back down, check this out. Then we got this. Version number four, I'm like, boom, that is it. That is it. That is the podcast of the number one podcasting show in the, in the damn region. That, that gives me that vibe. So when I seen that, I'm like, yo, this is it. We're, we're rolling with this. I'm approving this, right? And again, four revisions, and we still only pay $12. We still only pay 12 US versus the 1500 I got quoted for this. And then he gave me a 3D mock-up, you know, with the with the record, right? And then he also provided me with the PSD file. So that if I need to make changes in future, I have the source file to be able to make changes in future. Again, $12. Right? $12 on Fiverr. Got exactly what I wanted with unlimited modifications. He was so dope that one of my clients that I work with, I had him do her podcast as well. And same thing, knocked it out of the park, right? So again, there's amazing talent on Fiverr. You just need to go through people's portfolios and work with them to get exactly what you want, right? So cool. We had the music down. We had the artwork down. Then we went over to, you know, again, I wanted to build a website. So when I went to um, Namecheap.com, now I always recommend going to Namecheap to purchase domains because number one, they usually have the cheapest domains to purchase, but then they also have the widest selection of domain names available and the different types of brands. And they also um, segment them the best that I've ever seen. So I went to uh, Namecheap and I typed in um, Digipreneur. I hit search. So then what I want you guys to do is when you're searching for domains, I want you guys to type in what you want, but then I want you to scroll all the way down, right? But look at this, look, look at this, right? The first thing was Digipreneur. So Digipreneur.com was taken, right? But Digipreneur.co was 970 US dollars. I was like, my God. <laughs> Digipreneur.org is considered a premium domain and they are charging 26960 US dollars for that domain. No way in bloody hell. <laughs> That's US. So I laughed, right? So again, what you want to do is you want to scroll all the way down. And then you want to click on Explore 400 Additional Extensions. So check this out. Then they bring up the filters. And there's so many different branded um, top-level domain names for you to choose from. So you would go through you know, which filter works for you. So if this is a business website, go to Businesses, and then you're going to see all of the business domain names. So you have .accountants, .associates, .bargains, .bid, .boutique. Dot business. There are a variety of different business branded domain names. And again, this is your brand you're dealing with. And branded domains. Dot com is, is so generic now. It's played out. Now when you guys are building your websites, 
Get into the habit of looking for branded domain names because ultimately that's going to help brand your platform. All right. When people are searching for your content, um, when you're putting up more content in your platform and you understand how SEO works, it's not necessarily about your domain name anymore. It's more about the content you're putting out and answering the right questions, using the right keywords, um, putting up the right content on, on the internet. That way when people are Googling um, certain questions or queries, your content comes up um, for the particular keywords, questions, queries that you're answering with your platform, right? And people are coming into your platform, not necessarily always through your front page, but they're Googling something and they're coming into your platform from your blogs, from your contact us page, they're coming into your website from all from all over the place, right? It doesn't necessarily come through your home page directly. So what I did was, I knew that my platform was going to be a media platform. So I went over to media and music, and I looked for what would fit my thing, my brand. So there was .band, .cam, .design, .digital, .film. When I seen .fm, I was like, yo, that is it. That is it. That is for me. But digipreneur.fm also was the most expensive domain name I've ever bought in my life. Digipreneur.fm cost me 80 US dollars just for the domain name per year. And I was like, yo, how much do I really want to rep this Digipreneur brand? <laughs> how much? Like, how, what is the brand worth to me? You know what I mean? Digipreneur.fm and my, and the podcast is Digipreneur FM. Digipreneur.fm is perfect. That is the most ideal domain name that I see. But 80 US dollars is a lot of money for a domain name. But the way I looked at it is that this is my brand. And every touch point within my brand is going to help increase the value to um, potential sponsors, um, to potential brand partners. And the reality is, is that if I do what I need to do, if I build this brand correctly, I will make that money back. You know, people are gonna donate, people are gonna book me for brand deals, they're gonna sponsor, they're gonna advertise, and you'll make that money back in no problem. Because when people look at the brand and they see every aspect of the brand, when they, when they lay it all out, I'm like, wow, this, this brand has prestige to it. This brand has a level that we're not accustomed to seeing in the region. So I went, I, you know, I had a couple drinks. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to hold you. I had a couple drinks. And I, <laughs> I went and I purchased the most expensive domain name I've ever bought in my life. 80 US dollars. 80 US dollars is what I paid for the Digipreneur.fm. And I bought the domain over here, and then I use Overmill.com as my host. I use Overmill as my host. They're a local um, hosting provider here in Trinidad and Tobago. And the team over there is really good. Um, I host my website, host all of my personal websites over there, right? So I bought my domain here. I brought it over to Overmill for hosting, and I went to work on building the website, all right? So that is, what did we cover? We covered the podcast art. We covered the intro and outro music. We also covered the domain name. We went through the website. What else did we, what else, what else do we need to, to, to dive into? Let's talk equipment. So as I said in the beginning, as I said in the beginning, to, to really start a podcast, the only thing you need is your smartphone and your headset. That's all you need in terms of starting a podcast, right? And you could use a platform like Anchor or any podcast host to upload your audio files. Um, and you could use a free tier just to get started in the podcast world. Now, that's what I would do if I'm just getting started and I don't want to spend no money. I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to use the recorder app on my phone to record my audio. And I'm going to use my, my, my microphone, my headset. And I'm going to speak into it, right? 
and use a free platform. So you could use Anchor. Anchor is one of the popular ones for free. Uh, Podbean is another popular podcast hosting company. and They have a free tier as well. Um, any one of them that has a free option, record your audio, upload to the podcast host, um, and that's how you're going to be able to get your podcast out there for free. And that's how you could start right now, and then you could upgrade as you go along. For me, this is we're going to go through what I use. We're going to go through my equipment. So we're going to go through piece by piece my equipment for uh, the podcast. So the most so what we're going to start with is we're going to start with the mic. So the mic that I use is the Audio Technica. The Audio Technica ATR 2100X. So this is the microphone that I'm currently using. All right. The microphone costs um, 100 US dollars. Right? And it's a dynamic microphone. So what a dynamic microphone is, is, and, 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 and let, me, let me give you guys, um, you know, let me break down really simply the two types of microphones that you guys see a lot. The most popular microphone that when people are thinking about getting um, a mic, they always run to the Yeti because the Yeti has the brand name. It has the brand power. But the Yeti is what is called a condenser microphone. And what a condenser microphone does is it's created to pick up, it has multiple mics inside, and it's created to pick up as much sound in the room as possible. So when you're doing a podcast, you don't want a microphone that is gonna pick up all of the sounds around. So if there's birds chirping outside, it's picking that noise up. If you have a fan on, it's picking that up. It's picking up every single sound around you because a condenser microphone is built to have multiple people in the room and pick up all of the sounds in, this, in, the, in the surrounding area. You do not want that for a uh, podcast mic. You do not want a condenser microphone. What you want is a dynamic microphone. And what a dynamic microphone does is it's built, it's unidirectional, and it's built to pick up the sound that is directly in front of the microphone, and it filters out all of the background noise. So you could have a fan right beside you beating on you and the dynamic microphone is going to filter out that noise and it's only going to focus on the sound that's right in front of your microphone. So if I talk away over here, right, you're not really hearing me, it's going to be really faint in the background if I were to walk away and start to talk. But the minute I come in nice and close, you guys are hearing me you know, nice, crispy, sexy. Right? I, I got that very white tone. Well, okay, I'm lying. I don't got the very white voice. But you guys get the idea. The condenser mic picks up the sound right in front of the microphone and it filters out the background noise, which is what you want. Especially if you are, if you are living in an area that is, is busy with traffic. You have other people in the house. You live close to the road. So there's, um, there's cars passing by. You're out here in the Caribbean and you have you have co-hosts, you have parrots, you have you have chickens. We got chickens outside, so when you decide to you know jump up and, and, and show out, you know you, you need something that's gonna filter out that type of noise, right? So this is the microphone that I use. Now, because I wanted the best quality, I did not want to use the USB. I wanted to use the XLR cable. So the XLR cables are or what allow you to get even better audio quality. And so the audio interface I use that allows me to connect my XLR cable and then it um, it kind of boosts the audio and allows me allows me to connect it to my computer. The audio interface that I use is called the Behringer um, UM2. So I use the Behringer UM2, the one channel. So this is my current audio interface that connects to my microphone and then it connects to my computer that allows me to get that nice, sexy sound. Now, this is what I started off with. So I bought this setup last year. This is what I started off with. What I just recently purchased and this is what's going to allow me to take my podcasting up a whole nother level 
is I recently bought the Roadcaster Pro. And the Roadcaster Pro is a whole um, podcast studio and live streaming and live streaming studio as well. So I'm going to be able to connect multiple microphones. I'm going to be able to have multiple inputs. I can connect USB devices to it. I can connect phones to it via um, a cord or via Bluetooth. Um, these colorful pads here are sound effects pads. So I can program um, intro, outro music, sound effects, all that will be programmable. So when I'm live streaming, I can press buttons to get sound effects. Um, when I'm podcasting, It'll allow me to be more productive in my workflow. But when I'm talking, um, I can quickly, you know, bring in music. I can create sound effects all on the fly, and I can do that all live, right? One of the things that I really, really, really wanted this for is because I plan to have guests. So when guests come in, sometimes people are not in a position to jump on a computer and then record. But everybody has their their phones, so I can use this studio to bring in a WhatsApp call and people can call me via WhatsApp and they would connect to my studio and I can, you know, increase the volume, lower down the volume, have the sound effects. Um, I can do that. What I can also do is I plan on allowing live guests to be able to call in to the podcast. So I'm going to be giving out the podcast, the Digipreneur podcast phone number. And people can call in while I'm live. So let's just say we're doing this live stream, right? Because I could do this for live streaming as well. I could say, hey, call X, Y, and Z, da, 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 da. And when the phone rings, the podcast studio will allow me to bring in that phone call. And you, the audience, can hear the phone call um, live. So this is going to allow me to create content on a whole nother level for podcasting purposes and also for live streaming purposes. So this was an investment um, it's not cheap. As you can see, it's 700 US, um, but I did not start there. So remember I showed you that you can start for free with just using your phone. Um, if you want to step it up a notch, you can buy the microphone and then you can get the audio interface if you want to get that extra crispy, sexy, silky sound, right? And that audio interface was only, um, what was it? It was like 40, 45 US dollars. 45 US dollars, right? And then the podcast studio is 700 US dollars. But that takes you to, that, that lets you get into production. You can produce live streams. You can produce podcasts on the fly and allows you to create more engaging content. And the workflow is just insane with that, right? Um, Celise asked me a question. Can you maintain the quality of guest contributions on their phone or device? Um, yes, because you can still, if it's, you can still do post production to clean up the audio, to, to, to clean it up. Um, so you're still going to have a level of, of, of quality control. So if they come in with WhatsApp, um, WhatsApp, um, voiceover data, WhatsApp voice calls are usually pretty good. Once a person has a decent connection, what happens is a lot of times people use things like Squadcast. And Squadcast will, you know, record the audio. It's in, it's 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 voice over the internet protocol, kind of same thing as as, as WhatsApp. But again, it, it, people have to kind of uh, use their their computers, use their phones, um, and sometimes you can run into issues where people are just struggling to kind of log in. At least with um, WhatsApp calls, uh, people can just call you, and it, again, this simplifies the workflow. Um, but then also, again, if I want to have live guests call in, I can give out the number. And people can call me right now and I can bring in that phone call during a live stream or during a podcast. It, it allows me to now create more engagement and have a different level of production that people are not accustomed to seeing, especially in the region. Right? So that's why I made I made that um, I made that uh, that purchase. So your mic, your audio interfaces, and that's really all you need for podcasting uh, in terms of equipment. All right. Now, for podcast hosts, this is when you're going to load your podcast. Um, after you've recorded it, this is where you're going to go to, to, to uh, load the podcast. So I use, I use a podcast platform called Podbean. Again, shout outs to my guy, Kevin Valley. Put me on Podbean. I use Podbean. They're one of the stalwarts in the, in the podcast hosting industry. 
And if you go over to pricing, like I told you before in the beginning, they have a free tier. And that allows you to record five hours in, in, in total per month of podcasts, right? And then you can start off with the, well, this is if you were to buy it yearly. But this yearly is actually, yeah, there it is, $14 a month if you don't want to take the yearly plan. So 14 bucks a month, and that's going to give you unlimited access, unlimited bandwidth to upload all of your podcasts. All right? You could use something like Anchor. You could use another popular one is Buzzsprout. So Buzzsprout is another platform that's really popular for podcasting. And that is their fees, right? So they're a little bit more, you know, uh, it's a little bit more costly and a little bit more limitations, right? 25 bucks a month and 12 hours max. But what I realize that they allow you to do is they allow you to, they allow you to add higher quality audio files. So if you wanted to add wave files, if you're into you know, sound quality, uh, Buzzsprout allows you to add wave files, which is like one of the highest um, levels of quality for audio. Whereas Podbean, um, even though they're giving you unlimited, um, you can only upload MP3 files. Um, so the quality is not as good as WAV files, but I mean, it's still really good, right? Well, you can use that. Now, a question that I've gotten over the past couple of days where people were seeing me um, put out or create the podcast was, you know, how do you get your podcast on all of the uh, podcast directories? So when you... When you, um, when you sign up with your podcast platform, your podcast host will allow you to, your podcast host will allow you to distribute on a wide variety of podcast directories. So you can submit your podcasts to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, well, they have their own application, to Spotify, they submit it to Amazon Music. They submit the podcast to Pandora, to TuneIn, to iHeartRadio, to Player FM, to Listen Notes. You can also um, submit your podcast to Stitcher, to Podcast Addicts, to Deezer, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Castro Cast, Box. So these are all different podcast directories um, that people use to listen to their podcasts. So your podcast host will assist you in submitting your podcast to all of these different directories. Now, what happens sometimes is that people create the podcast and they only put it on the major one, which is Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, and Google Podcasts, and they kind of leave it there. But everybody all across the world uses all of these different platforms. And it's free to submit your podcast to all of these platforms. There's no harm. So once you submit your podcast to these platforms and it gets and they pick it up, they accept it and they and they host it, then that means your podcast, you and you only have to do this one time, but your podcast would now be available in all of those different channels. So when you go into your podcast statistics and we hit overview. And we see, so in the two days that I've launched, I've had 149 downloads. That's really good, right? I'm, I'm happy with that. You get to see where those downloads are coming from. Trinidad, U.S., Jamaica, right? Again, that's over the past two days, right? That's beautiful. But then you get to see where are those downloads, what are people using? So I see that, you know, the majority of the stuff came from Google Chrome. We have Apple Podcasts, CastBox. Now, just imagine I did not submit to, to, to Podcast Addicts or Amazon or Deezer, right? Google Podcasts only came alive, you know, after lunchtime. It's still, it's still processing. So I, I've been able to do, I've been able to get some of these numbers without having Google Podcasts, which is great. Google Podcasts only, only accepted my podcast um, this afternoon, but... If I didn't submit to CastBox or if I didn't submit to Podcast Addicts, this would just be users I did not have. So when you have your podcasts, you want to be able to submit your podcast to all of these different directories because you have no idea where your list, what your listeners are using to listen to podcasts. Not everybody is using um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Some of them are using Deezer, Stitcher, CastBox, iHeartRadio. You have no idea. 
So submit your, your podcast to all of these different platforms, all right? So that's your podcast host. And then after, you know, um, after a day, what you can do is you could sign up with the podcast um, platform Chartable. And Chartable is the place that ranks all of the podcasts across the world. It shows you where you are falling in the top 200 charts per country, per category. So you can type in, you you could got you guys can do this too if you guys want to see. If you're somebody looking to advertise in somebody's podcast, go to chartable.com and search for their podcast. That way you can see where they're ranking. So you can type in anybody's podcast. Let's put in Gary V's podcast. And when we scroll down, we can see all of the charts that Gary V is ranking in. We can see all of the countries and we can see the categories. So we have them down for Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So let's click on more Apple Podcast charts. And this is all of the countries that Gary V is ranking in and the different categories and where he is on the charts. And this is changing every single day. Every single day somebody can supplant you. So you got to be able to create the content, drive traffic to your podcast, because the more people are listening is the higher you're going to grow on the charts, right? And when you're advertising with somebody, you don't just want to advertise with people just because. You need to see where are they ranking on the podcast charts. Chartable tracks all of the podcasts all over the world in every single market. Where are they ranking? And you can see all the different countries. So this means that People in France, Sweden, China, all of these countries are listening to Gary Vee's podcasts in these different categories, and he's ranking. This is his ranking in all of these different countries, right? So my podcast has only been indexed for 24 hours. So let us type in Digipreneur FM. There we go. Let's see what's going on. Digipreneur FM. Digipreneur FM, let's take a look at this. Okay, so look at this, right? This is new. So look at this. We just got, we just, uh, we just cracked, and the rankings go up to 200. So we just cracked the 200 um, rank, we're at 104 in Canada for entrepreneurship. We are the number three overall podcast for all podcasts in Trinidad and Tobago right now. We are the number one podcast for business. We're the number one podcast for entrepreneurship. In Jamaica, we're the number 43 podcast for business, number seven for entrepreneurship. And we just cracked um, the Barbados chart. So we're at number 30, 31 for business. And we're at number seven for entrepreneurship. All right. So this, this is live. This is changing. This updates every 24 hours. So the more people listen to your podcast... Um, you can go up and down every single day. So again, when you guys, if you guys are looking to advertise on people's podcasts, jump on Chartable to see you know where their podcast is ranking. You also want to be able to see the, you also want to be able to get an idea of the person's stats. Not everybody will let you see the stats or, or or let you know what their stats are, but you guys can definitely ask. And if they don't give you the stats, you guys can at least look on Chartable and see where they're ranking and where the country is. That way, you guys know where your potential ad spend is going to. If you were to advertise on that platform, I say all that to say, if y'all want to advertise with your boy, <laughs> we out here, we here, <laughs> we, we rank it, we doing good, right? So definitely holler at your boy if you guys are looking to advertise, all right? So folks, now is the time where we get into lay Q&A. We've covered a lot of stuff. We covered the artwork, we covered the intro ultra music, we covered the website, we covered the hosting. And you know, I, I will say one thing I'll say about your website is again, you want to have that platform people can go to to learn about the brand that they are going to be investing in. You want to have the information about the podcast, you know, uh, promote the sponsorship opportunities, allow people to donate. Your audience wants to support you, allow them to support you on that platform, right? And your website will allow you to collect data because now you can have an email list so people can subscribe and get emails about the podcast. They can subscribe to 
when they come to the platform, you could use a Facebook pixel or a Google pixel to retarget people, to push out your content to them about the podcast. So you definitely want to have your website to help bolster your podcast, all right? So let us get into the Q&A session, section for tonight. So any questions you guys have, any questions you guys have, let me know. Drop your questions in the comments. Let us get into the Q&A. I'm, I'm I want all the smoke. I want all the questions. So Kalena asks, do the rankings break down the demographics? Unfortunately, no. Not from, the, not from your side. When I log into Chartable, it will break down my demographics. And when you want to advertise with somebody, right, you can go to that influencer, that podcast, or whoever, and you can ask them, well, you know, what is your demographics like? Because they have, when they log into their dashboards, they have their demographics. And it's up to them now to give it to you. So they will they can provide you with it. But then if they don't provide you with it, right, uh, well, all right, cool. You could at least go to Chartable to see, you know, where their stuff is ranking. But ultimately, the demographics, you know, the countries, you know, the genders, the, you know, all that stuff, that's, you know, private to that specific uh, person. So, Tay Dean asks, what do you use to edit your episodes? Yes, actually, very good question because I didn't even get into that. So, I use two things. So, let me go back to sharing screen. Um, I use Audacity. Audacity is where I go to record. Audacity is free. It is open source. You can go to audacity.org um, and you can download Audacity and you can record all of your audio files in here. So I record in Audacity. And then the next thing that I do is I would go to a platform called Auphonic. I go to Auphonic. And what this does is this is a post-production web service. So this does things for you like let me see if I could, let me see, can I? All right, so perfect. So what Auphonic does is it um, it levels out the audio, it normalizes the audio, so it doesn't, it, it, if, if, you're, if your audio is peaking, if you're speaking too hard and you're hitting the red lines, this will reduce the noise. Um, it filters out any static, um, any noise and humming, it reduces those things. So if there's some you know, interference, it will take out all of that um, and clean up the audio for you. And this platform is actually free. Um, what it, there's a free plan. So for free, they give you two hours of post-production per month. Two hours of post-production a month. So you would record your files in Audacity. You would take your files. You upload it to Auphonic.com. This would now clean up the audio. I would then take the audio file that was cleaned up, put it back into Audacity, and then add my intro, add my outro, and then save it. And then that now cleaned up audio um, file, that mixed down file from Audacity, is what I would take to put inside of Podbeat, my podcast host. So I hope that answers your question. All right, so next up we have Mickey. Mickey says, if I did a podcast mixing music as a DJ, would copyright be an issue? Um, depends on the platform that you use. All depends on the platform that you use. That is strictly about the platform that you are using. Mickey also asks, is there a recommended podcast length? No, there is not. You can podcast for as long as you want. As a matter of fact, um, there are people who have one minute, 60 second podcasts podcast I've seen five minute podcasts and as you guys know the 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 most famous podcaster is Joe Rogan he is also the the highest paid creator right now and his podcasts are like four hours long three four hours long so there is no um, recommended length the only thing that I would say is you know find you know what works for you if you want to do quick punchy podcast to the point you do that if you want to have long podcasts now here's the thing this is the other reason why um podcasts are so different than every other medium when you go onto youtube right and you look at your your, your stats you could have a, a three minute video and the average watch time for the video is 20 seconds 
you could have a one hour video and the average watch time of that video is, is, is 20 minutes. Video, people are forced to sit down and watch it, right? So the average watch time is never anywhere near what the length of your video is because people skim through your videos. With blogs, blogs, if you write your blogs correctly, so I do a lot of list-based blogs, so people can skim my content. So if I say five things to whatever, people can skim all five things and I leave it up to them whether they want to read through the entire thing. Now, the medium that has the highest um, listening time or consumption rate, the medium that has the highest consumption rate is podcasts. And that's because when people listen to podcasts, podcasts are the only medium that allows for passive consumption. So what does that mean? If I'm driving, I can't read a blog. I can't watch a video. But if I'm driving, I can listen to a podcast. If I'm working out, I can listen to a podcast. If I'm cooking, if I'm doing the dishes, whatever, I can listen to podcasts. Podcast is the only medium that allows you to press play and listen and listen passively. No other platform allows for that. Video, you have to focus, which is why the average watch time, as much as people tell you video, 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 the average watch time for video is not high, right? So yeah, people aren't watching your stuff. And then blogs, blogs have a high read rate, but again, people have to focus and read your blogs. But podcast is the only platform that allows for passive consumption, all right? Hope that answers your question. Tadine says, you're the man. Thank you. Love it. Safia says, I love using Alphonic. Listen, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Celie says, can also depend on how much of the music you're using, not legal advice. <laughs> I love it. Yes, Celie. Mickey, she might send you an invoice for that. <laughs> Become investable. My guy says about 15 seconds. Yeah, correct. You know, uh, uh, your video watch time, the average watch time is. It's crazy. And again, that's going to differ for everybody, right? So just be careful when you're doing video because you might look at your average watch time video. And if it's not high, then people are not watching your content. And a, a view is only, if somebody, if somebody watches three seconds of your video, that counts as a view. That's not the metric to watch. So when you see people with a million view of videos, that's cool. But that doesn't necessarily mean that people watched your video. When you look at the average watch time, if your video is 15 minutes or your average watch time is two minutes, people are not watching your video. And if you use a platform like TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy will allow you to get those types of metrics so you can see um, what people are dealing with on their YouTube channel. Brent says, this is not a question, but can we hear the voiceover? Yeah, I can play the voiceover. I'll play, I'll play it at the end. Not a problem. Um, uh, Become Investable says, great first episode. If anyone wants to hear Karen cry out of passion. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, uh, episode one kind of kind of got intense. Kind of took a left turn. But you know what? We've hit the hour and 20 minute mark. If there are any more questions, please drop them in now. I will take two more questions and then we will sign off because it's getting late. I want people to know, go ahead their bed. I have another beverage to go and mix. So if anybody has any other questions, I will take two more. If not, then we will most definitely wrap this stuff up. And again, I thank you. Please, please, please go and visit digipreneur.fm. Digipreneur.fm. Subscribe to the platform. Join the email list. You will be, you'll be able to um, see all the content and keep up to date with it. Become Investable just asks, how many episodes are you thinking per season? Bro, I don't even know. <laughs> right now, um, I might do, I, I, I'm not too sure. I'm not I'm not sure if I'm going to do seasons. Um, I, I really believe that I might be doing, um, it might be endless for me. It might just be um, me once a week on a specified day. Right now, I'm trying to get to um, five or six episodes. I want to get six episodes done by the, by the end, by the weekend. So next week, I'll pick a day, and every week, I will have a, a episode rolling out. And I'm even thinking about, I know a couple of guys that I follow, if there's an episode that, if there's a week where they don't have an episode, 
they will still release an older episode so they can still build that engagement because people might not necessarily have listened to that particular episode. So they'll run an episode back on a week that they don't create something new. I might follow that format, but um, yeah, right now, right now in my mind, I'm gonna be doing it every week. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. All right, perfect. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Mickey says, thanks for sharing, followed you on IG, beautiful. Celie says, are you doing topic themes? Yes, it's online business, digital entrepreneurship. So what I'm gonna be doing is, I, it, everything is going to be formed by way of a, of a masterclass, of an audio masterclass. So I'm going to have solo episodes where I'm going to be teaching. I'm also going to be having guests come on and we're going to be talking about, you know, their business or their expertise, but not just, you know, tell me about your business. No, we're going to talk about how your business solves the problem, the tips, the strategies that we could use your business for to solve a problem, right? So everything is going to be in the form of an audio masterclass. If people want to check about, you know, learning about businesses, the business owners' backgrounds, that's what Caribbean Power Lunch is for. You go and check Kevin Valley. Kevin Valley knows how to get the tears out of you. He knows how to get the emotions out of you. He knows how to craft that story and get your story out of you. I ain't that good. So we're going to focus on what I know I can do which is I like solving problems. So I want to learn. I want, I want to, to help teach people as to how your business, your product, your solution, or your expertise solves respective problems to help people navigate the digital age. Boom, that is what I'm doing. Brent says, thank you for taking time to explain and break it down. No problem, bro. Silly says, makes sense. Listen, I love it. I love it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for tonight episode listen this was definitely great um if i i again if you guys watch the ig stories the ig stories over the weekend were, were, were it was a lot of fun to create to be able to show you guys the backstory and you guys got to see it live me piece together every single thing that we talked about today we did that through stories so that was amazing to do i had a lot of fun the feedback was great tonight was again to launch the website and also to kind of recap the pieces because people still wanted to um, see how it all came together. But again, we did it on a, on, a, on a bigger scale, right? So folks, that is it from me tonight. Digipreneur.fm. Go and subscribe on the platform if you so want to support the, your boy. If you want to allow me to keep on doing this, you guys can feel free to go and hit donate, support the platform, support the art form. Support the channel. Um, again, we have so much more content um, to be brought to you guys to help you navigate the digital age. All right? We are on that. Online business is the way to go. Digital entrepreneurship is the, is the thing to be in. Even if you have a full-time job, learning a skill right now and how you are able to supplement your income utilizing um, digital platforms, digital tools, um, so that you can earn some additional cash at home. That is the way to go right now. And I really believe that that is how the Caribbean is going to put themselves on the map. That is how people are going to become more self-reliant, generate more income. We're not begging for handouts. We're not waiting for the government to do something. You guys can learn the skills right here, right now. All you need is a, is a computer. All you need is your phone. And you guys can earn money from anywhere in the world. We have all of these platforms. We have WePay, SocialPay, BuzzPay. Heck, you can even use PayPal. You have First Atlantic Congress. You have Figaro. You have all these tools that we can use throughout the Caribbean to get paid and make money online. So, folks, again, I thank you for See you guys in the next episode of Digipreneur FM. Thank you, guys. You guys have been great. Have yourself a wonderful night. Before we go, if you guys enjoyed this live, please send me off with some flames. Drop some flames in the comments below. Let me know if you guys enjoyed tonight's live stream. Send me off on the high horse. And what we will do is we will close with the intro music. All right? Drop some flames if you guys like this episode. We're closing with the intro music. Take care.
Since you guys are asking for the voiceover, let's close with the voiceover, all right? Here you guys go. Welcome to all Caribbean entrepreneurs. If you've been ready and waiting to take your business digital and get paid online while you sip something strong on the beach, this podcast is for you. We'll hear from the Caribbean's finest entrepreneurs on topics like e-commerce, business development, brand building, social media, their wins and failures. This is the only place in the region helping you navigate the digital age from the Caribbean's perspective. This is Digipreneur FM. And now, let's give it up for the Digiboss himself, Mr. Karan Rose. You guys have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful night. Take care.